In today's video, I want to take a look at the format string, but not the actual uh, format specifiers, which I did make a video about, which you can check up top. This time, I'm going to take a look at a format string in a in a practical way, in a way that uh, not many people realize that it can be used. So let's take a simple problem that we have to solve. Let's say we have a uh, let's say we have a point, a two dimensional point and a structure for that. So type def struct point point. And this guy is going to have only just two variables x and y. That's it. And what I really want is to create a system that uh, allows me to print either to the screen or to a file these sort of points. So uh, if we, for example, try to let's instantiate here a point point p and I say here equals to first x is going to be I don't know 10 and y is going to be let's say 25. Okay, and if I want to print it on the screen, I'm just going to do something like print f percent d and then percent d backslash n and then p dot x and then p dot y. And if I try to run this, I'm just going to get 10 and 25 on the screen. So that's fair enough. That's simple. But what if I want to print it on a but what if I actually want this string that has the x and y coordinate as a variable inside my program? Well, I can simply use the, not the printf, but the snprintf function. And this guy, what it does is instead of just printing it out to the standard output, it prints it out to another string, another buffer. So I can first uh, declare here a buffer. So I can say char, uh, let's call it buffer of 100 characters. And this guy takes in as the first parameter is the string that you want to save this formatted string into. And then uh, the, the number of characters that it should allow to actually save inside this buffer. We don't want a buffer overflow, right? So I'm going to say here 100 because 100 is the size of my buffer. Now, if I try to actually print this buffer, so I'm going to say, let's just say percent %s and then buffer. If I try to run this, you'll notice I'm going to still get 10 and 25, but this time I'm printing this buffer, which has that string 10 and 25. But now in another function, I don't know, let's say, let's call it void process uh, that takes in a point, point, I'm going to call it, let's call it Q this time so that we know which one is which. Uh, this guy takes in a Q and I, it's going to do some processes here, but at the end it's going to log some information. So let's just say that for some reason we just add to our X uh, variable here, I just add five and then I try to print F this uh, Q. So I'm going to say print F again, percent D space percent D backslash N and then Q dot X and then Q dot Y. Okay, and I also call this process of p, right? So p is going to be q, no, q is going to be going to be p, and uh, this guy is going to get added five to it. So if I run this, I should get, yep. So I got fifteen and twenty-five, and I got ten and twenty-five. Why didn't this guy change? Well, that's because I passed in. I didn't pass this guy by reference. It actually physically copied the point from here to here, right? So, and I just changed that copy. I didn't change the actual uh, p variable here. That's why I made the distinction here. Now, what if you wanted to change the format? So the way the data from the point is being printed on the screen, what do you do in that case? Well, here it's pretty easy, right? To just, for example, I want to add a parentheses in here and here, and I want to add a comma in between, right? And I do the same for this one. So I just kind of copy and paste it. Fair enough. So if I run, run it, I'm going to get uh, the point formatted the way I want. But think on a larger scale, right? Let's let's say that we have like uh, tens of source files and every single one of them has like five or ten of these printfs. Right? It's pretty tedious to go ahead and change every single one of them, right? Especially if you want to change it multiple times or something. So how can you fix that? Well, these format strings can be stored 
and used later on for formatting that certain uh, type of data. So I can see here, instead of just, uh, instead of this literal, I can either have it be as a constant or as a macro. We're going to define this as a macro as it's much more useful if it is a macro than if it is an actual constant. So I'm gonna start with hashtag define and let's call it something like point format or format underscore point however you want to uh, arrange things here. And this guy is going to be, well, the parentheses, the percent %d that we need here. And I'm going to leave out the backslash n because maybe you don't want a backslash n every single time. What if, what if you want to sort of uh, print out two points on the same line, right? That's valid. So why limit ourselves? So I'm just not going to add that backslash n. Now, okay. What we can do next is to actually use it instead of our format string. So I can say here point format instead of whole instead of the whole string and point format. So what a preprocessor will do is we'll take this string and actually replace it every single time it sees this point format stuff. So now if I run it, you'll notice we're gonna get the same result, except we're not getting that new line, right? They are both on the same line. How can we have that as well? Hmm. Well, the easiest way to merge to uh, string literals in C. So uh, what's a string literal? A string literal is this, right? It's just a string that is right there uh, written uh, character by character inside the actual file, inside the source file. Uh, and this point format actually gets replaced by a string literal. And if you want to concatenate another string literal, which is the backslash n, all you have to do is just say backslash n, right? And if I do this for both of them, you'll notice if I run it, I'm gonna get a new line at the end here. And you can try it for yourself. This concatenation actually works. So if I, for example, copy and paste this here, uh, C is gonna actually let me do this, even though I have two codes here, two double codes, one after the other. That's valid in C, surprisingly enough. And if I run it, it's gonna also work because really that's what the preprocessor is doing. So this is one way of doing things. And if you want, let's say, you can actually prefix it, my point, and then that, and that's gonna give us my point Q with 15 and 25, and that also works very nicely. And the really nice thing about this is if you change it, let's, for, let's say for example, we want instead of a comma, we want a semicolon. Well, I just change it here. And if I run it, I'm gonna see that uh, difference in every place that this format was used. So changing this is very easy. And couple that with the fact that, you know, the data structures might actually change. So if for some reason we think, oh, okay, well, this is nice, but I want points that can hold uh, like uh, floating point numbers. Well, what do I do? Well, I can see here double, but uh, that's great and all, but if I run it, uh, I'm just gonna get zeros and nothing is gonna happen really. But what I can do is change the actual format and say instead of percent %d, percent %lf, that's for the double. And I can change this here as well. And if I try to run it now, you'll notice I'm gonna get the right numbers, except, well, with a comma or with a period and many zeros here. And this way of doing things is very versatile. Like if I want, for example, here to print another point on the same line, all I have to do is just say, let's, let's declare here another point. Let's say, I don't know, uh, u equals point x is, um, I don't know, 19.5 and point y is 0.25, right? And if I want to print it, my point q and my point uh, u like this and then point format just like so, and also pass in the parameters. So if I say here, u.x and u.y. Now if I run it, you'll notice I'm gonna get this uh, result. All right, so 15 and 25, and then 19.5 and 0 0.25 is my other uh, point variable that I have defined here. Now there are many other solutions to this problem. Another thing you can do is try to create a function that just says print point, and just you take in a point and then it prints it on the screen. The problem with that is that you cannot really use it, for example, to save it in a buffer like we do here, right? 
here what we do is we save it in a buffer and then print it on the screen. So that's a bit different. Uh, then what you'd have to do is to return a string. But then if you return a string, you cannot actually have um, this concatenation. Because remember, I told you, you can concatenate to literal strings, but a dynamically, a, a, uh, buff, a buffer here cannot, is not a literal string. It's not an actual uh, string inside the source file. It's just a variable, right? An identifier. And you cannot just concatenate them uh, one after the other. You're going to have to actually call strcat or something like that on it. And it's going to be a bit more tricky to do it in just one line. With this format, I think this is much, much easy to do. And you can start using it whenever you have a, well, not even a really big project, but if you are working with structures and you want to print them on a log file or something or an output file, this is a really nice solution, I think. All right, that's about it. Uh, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you're going to start using these uh, format macros, which I think are very useful. Not in every case, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be useful. And well, see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.